So we just talked about current flowing through a wire, and we now need to think about why did the current flow through the wire? What was making those free electrons go to the right? Were they being pushed? Were they being pulled? Was it gravity? You just turn the wire like this? I don't know. So let's think, or even not what was making a move, but why, how do we even describe the fact that they're moving? So first let's go back to mechanics. So you remember, you've done some mechanics, and if you wanted to think about a ball on a hill, and it's gonna go from point A to point B, you could ask yourself, how fast is it gonna go at point B? And in mechanics, we learn two ways to calculate that. One is to think about the force, to do the kinematics. You could say, well, the force, there's a gravitational force this way, and part of it has a component down the ramp, and part of it has a component into the ramp, and there's a normal force, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and it's rolling, right? So you could do the kinematics and keep up with the force as a function of position in two dimensions and get it that way. That would be one way. But actually, for this problem, remember there was an easier way. It was to use energy. You could also say it starts here, and it's dropping some height h. And the quicker way to get it would be to say the potential energy it started with, mgh, equals the kinetic energy it ends with. If we ignore the rolling, that's just 1 half mv squared. And then you can do it without thinking about all the details in between. Right? This was sort of the energy way to do things. We called the potential energy, we usually just called it the potential energy, but it was all, all due to gravitation. That was the only interaction we really had to think about. So we also remember we called this U, and we tend to call this K. So when we think about electrons moving through a circuit, and we want to figure out how fast they're going, what's the current, how many are moving, we don't really do it in terms of forces and accelerations, right? Here's a battery. This battery will make current flow in a wire. And if I look at it, it's not a nine Newton battery. Right? We don't apply a certain amount of Newtons to the electrons. It's a nine volt battery. When we think about current and the flow of electrons in a wire, we do it this way, we do it with energy. So the reason you always hear about volts for electric, uh, electrical circuits is because volts means potential. It means potential energy. You don't think about the actual forces. So in mechanics, you know, this was sort of the second way we did things. We first we did the details, then we did this. In electricity, when you're doing circuits, this is the only way. We don't ever think about the force in a circuit. That would be really weird, okay? So here, I'm now going to uh, define a couple things for you. Let's say one way you'll see it described is the potential difference. Or another word that gets thrown around for it is the voltage. Okay. Those sort of mean the same thing. We'll get more specific about where the difference part shows up and where it doesn't show up. But let's say um, what this basically is, it, it describes the potential energy due to electrical forces. So just like we had gravitational forces driving everything here, and we did the potential due to the gravitational forces, we can have electrical forces, and we can have the potential due to the electrical forces. And that's what we call the electrical potential, okay? So the potential then, the way we keep up with it, the way we define it, the electrical potential, is similar to what we do um, with the field. So remember what the electric field was. We just took the force you should get and divided it by the charge of the little test charge. It was a way to sort of normalize it for the test charge. E field was F over Q. The electric potential is kind of the same idea. It's actually just U, the potential energy, over Q. Right? So if you just say potential, you usually you mean potential energy. If you say electric potential, you mean the potential energy over Q. But a lot of times we get lazy, and if we're talking about circuits, we just say the potential. We don't say electric every time because you're talking about circuits. What else, what else would it be? So it's sort of this energy per unit charge. And this is also labeled uh, delta V. If you're thinking about a difference, delta V, you might call that delta U, the change of potential over the charge. Okay. Whether you put in the delta or not, it kind of depends. Often what happens in physics is it's technically always a difference. Like gravitational potential, it's always a difference. But sometimes if everybody agrees where zero is, 
then you leave off the delta. Okay? So like when you're doing gravitational potential, if we all agree that zero is the four, then you can calculate the gravitational potential as you go above the four. And it's just the height above the four times mg. Uh, really though, it could be different if you said, oh, actually zero is in the basement. Right? Then suddenly it's bigger because it could fall away to the basement. But no, we agree the four is zero. Same thing here. If you, everybody agrees where zero is, you just do this. But if it's unclear, maybe in a circuit, you want two different places in the circuit, and neither one of them is necessarily ground, then you think about delta V. Okay, so kind of like this, the deltas are a little ambiguous. So let me show you a little bit of an example of calculating the electric potential, not yet in a circuit, but for a simple system that you've thought about before. Let's see, let's imagine we have a big charge here, plus Q, just sitting there. That is the source of our electrical interaction. And then let's put a little charge here, a little Q. Okay. So a little Q is going to feel a force pushing it that way. Just like this mass feels a force pulling it this way. Okay. So it's going to feel a force like that. And maybe if you're holding it there and you let it go, it'll just start going. Right? It might go from A, and it might make it all the way to a point B. Fly along this line. And it'll still feel a force. It'll be a smaller force because it'll be further away but it'll speed up, right? If it started at rest and then you let it go, it might be going with some big velocity V. So you can imagine that would happen. A little charge Q feels a repulsive force from big charge Q. So um, what we want to do is see if we can write this potential, this thing called the potential. So in this case, the potential, or the electrical potential, we'd just call it V, and it would be Ke big Q over R, where R is the separation between big Q and the place you're asking for the potential, like that. Okay. It doesn't matter what little Q is, because what I'm really defining here, we're not defining the potential always on little Q, we're defining the potential as a function of position around big Q. Right? Little Q was kind of like the test charge back when we were thinking about the electric field. I could even plot the potential here. So what it looks like is plus V there, and this axis this way, it's just 1 over R. So it goes actually to infinity. The potential right on top of the charge is infinity, and it goes down as 1 over R. And on the other side, it goes down as 1 over R, like that. Now here I didn't do the delta, because for a point charge, we all agree that it's 0 at infinity. So when you have an agreement where 0 is, you don't use the delta. It's always minus zero at infinity, okay? But if you don't agree where zero is, then you need deltas like in a circuit. Okay, so that's a lot on potential and voltage. I just wanted to set you up so we're able to think about it in a circuit.